Welcome back. This is the sixth month of us being on our new property. And now most of those six months were actually winter or coming into winter. And now we are coming out of winter. But I wanted to show you what we've done in the garden since then and, and kind of encourage you to see what you can accomplish if you set your mind to it and you have lots of child labor. We first started right here. This is our kitchen garden area. And I was saving these bits of slab and bricks and that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, we're gonna do all these cool like winding pathways and stuff like that. And then I got sick of it and said, this is way too much effort. After about two days of trying to put in brick pathways, I said, forget it, I'm not doing this. So we just went ahead and did my normal thing, which is to make some mounded beds. And we gave them pathways that were about a foot and a half, maybe two feet wide and then we keep them mulched. These are permanent, permanent beds, no-till, and our kitchen garden, which is mostly just the herb garden, is right here because the vegetables start to go further back here. We have a few vegetables, but it's not a big deal. This area here has not been finished yet. We stuck a couple of herbs in the ground and a rose and some other stuff, but it's mostly just weeds. The area got tilled and got rained really hard on, and it's a mess, don't look at it. Just don't look at that part, that's bad. Look over here, this is great. This is beautiful. And we're already getting grass clippings because it's warmed up and the grass clippings are going around. Here's some mint and sage. Put a few blue potatoes in here, some comfrey. And we've got catnip and stevia and thyme. And we've even got strawberries starting to come in. I had this one strawberry that I stuck in here, this one plant, and it absolutely loves it. And then down at the end we have chives, and we have some garlic chives, onion chives and garlic chives. So this area is going to be like our, you know, the stuff that you, oh my goodness, wouldn't it be great if we had a little bit of garlic chives to throw on this thing that we're cooking? So come out here and get it. Wouldn't it be great if I had something for this weird sore throat? Come out here and get it. So it's the medicinal and kitchen you know, herb garden. We'll just call it the herb garden. I keep calling it the kitchen garden because it's, that's enough. We're not gonna talk about it. We're just, it's just the kitchen garden. It just is, because it's near the kitchen. <laughs> not confusing at all. So here are our four different varieties of potatoes. Right now, the red Pontiac is far ahead of the rest of them. We'll see how it goes on yields. This is red Lasota, red Pontiac. This is white Kennebec. And this is Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold's about ready to be hilled up again. As we go, we hill them up. You can see these great big mounds we've made. The potatoes started below this level and have worked their way up now to all the way up to here. If I had more dirt, I could put more dirt on there, but I am out of dirt. It's like, you just, I, I mean, I would have had to plant them like six feet wide to get as high a mound as I would need to cover them, but it's good enough. They're just over three feet apart. So that's the potato garden. I love potatoes. And then here we have more potatoes. This is supposed to be our yam bed. The yams are not really coming up yet because it's still a little bit early in the season for them to wake up. So I figured I'd take advantage of the space that was already mounted up here and put potatoes in it. And by the time the yams really start growing, the potatoes will be coming out. So the yams are actually sleeping from when I planted them back in the fall. They are all in here and another month of warm weather, they'll start popping up. But these Adirondack blue potatoes will be coming out of here probably before it disturbs them. And I've just thrown a little bit of leaves and stuff on top to kind of stop the erosion and keep the ground from getting beat. This is kind of a permanent yam bed, such as it is. In here we had our radishes which we harvested out and brought through and put in the kitchen and my wife has made tons and tons of pickled pickled radishes there are jars and jars and jars please send your address we will mail you some pickled radishes there's so many it's insane so anyhow uh, my wife Rachel and Rachel from Dusty Goat Homestead together uh, spent a day chopping up radishes and some of our cabbages and making a radish and cabbage sauerkraut mix. So that area here is where we 
pulled all the radishes out of, and then we have put in tomatoes. And my tomatoes got wrecked by a windstorm, which blew the um, poorly tied down greenhouse sideways and smashed the transplants. So I had to go buy them, which is painful. But I was able to find Amelia, which is a good variety for the south. Amelia is, uh, was recommended to me by a few different people as being a really good variety for here and very resistant to high heat and to splitting. So it's a good chance to try it. I didn't have any Amelias. So we put Amelias in here and then I put some peppers down here and I've given them tons of space and they have a little bit of mulch on them. I'd like to get some more, but we got what mulch we could before it rained. Mulch is a little scarce this time of year. This last little bit here is the radishes that we have left to go to seed. Somebody mentioned in my recent, one of my recent videos that the radish pods are also good to eat, which is true, they're zippy. I'm saving these to get seed out of, but you can use them and saute them and cook them. Some of them are actually bred deliberately to be very big seed pods. They call them rat tail radishes, which is not the most appetizing name in the world, but you know, we don't get to choose these things sometimes. So these will go mix together the different varieties of radishes. We saved basically the last 10 to 15% of the bed as our seed repository. There's a bunch of different types in here, so we should have a good mixed up land race of large radishes, hopefully. And the gaps where we had taken out cabbages and broccoli earlier in the season got potatoes in them. So anywhere, anywhere I had an opening, Earlier, I put potatoes in, and some of them are growing really fast, and some of them are not. You just never know. I had different varieties of potatoes that I stuck in here. I would not be surprised if these are the red Pontiac down on the end that are so far ahead of everything else. But whatever leftover seed potatoes I had, I stuck in here. Collards are still doing well. We actually have to eat some of them for dinner because it's about time to harvest a ton of them. They last longer. They're a good southern, good southern crop. They last a long time into the season, but we really do need to start picking them. I put some more radishes in here. We'll see how they do. Depends on if it stays cool or if it gets warm fast. Double row of beets. Some more beets here. I had a chicken that kept getting out and tearing this area up, so there are gaps in all this. There's some here and some there, and she kept coming in here and tearing through these leaves and covering the beets and then tearing the beets out. So she is gone, we gave her away. We did not eat her because she was too small. It's not that I'm merciful, it's just she was too small. More beets. We did little double rows of quick root crops in here to just fill this area in through the cold season. I've got a few kohlrabis in here. Nothing looks fantastic right now, but Nothing looks terrible either. It'll do fine. When there's seedlings like that, there's not much to look at. But as they get bigger, they should get prettier. You can see that uh, the cabbages and such that we do have in here look pretty nice. Some of you up north are probably looking going, That's, those are kind of small cabbages. Yeah, we gotta take what we can get in the south. As we come through here, I did a triple planting of three peach trees in one hole right here at the very edge of the grocery row gardens and I pruned the tops off. I'm just gonna let them grow out from here. These are the grafts. I pointed them outwards and they're all starting to grow. So we'll see how this does. It'll be interesting to have a triple trunked peach. I have not done that on peaches before. It should be fun. A few more Adirondack blue potatoes got in here. This is the leading edge of the grocery row gardens. I love the way they look. They're very pretty. Just a really, I mean, it could be ornamental. They're just gorgeous. I'm looking forward to see if they actually make any flowers. If they set any fruit, I'll, I'll save some seeds from them and then plant them and see what we get. It'll be interesting to breed potatoes. So this is the leading edge of the grocery row gardens. Over here is where Ezekiel's land race watermelons are going in this year. Those are his mounds. He uh, tilled this area up and created this area. 
uh, just a couple days ago. There's not a lot to see as we come through here yet because things are still waking up. But there's life here. We're kind of seeing what survived that really, really cold weather. And I started making pockets into the mulch and planting in. These are either cucumbers or melons. I had both going. I, I mixed all my varieties of melons and all my varieties of cucumbers in two different jars. And I planted both of them through here, but they look the same when they come up because they're all cucurbits and very similar. So there's, the melons are a mixture. There's, there's honeydews in there and canary melons and uh, cantaloupes and musk melons and who knows what else, just whatever melon, small melon, I stuck them in here. And then there's all the varieties of cucumbers that I mixed together plus the cucumber seeds that we saved from last year to kind of make a land race and I'm just gonna let them sprawl through here. But it's nice when you have these beds and nothing's really awake yet to just make little pockets, you know? You make a little pocket, put a little compost in it, and then you stick some seeds in it. So that's what I did, I would just go like that, stick a few seeds in, and then when they come up, I have my little running ground cover. A little stevia coming back some green onions I got from the grocery store. They had a display and they had knocked them all down to like 50 cents a bundle or something like that. So I bought a couple of bundles and planted them in here, here and there. There's some malanga coming back from the ground, also known as taro. And then there are all these onions, which are onion starts that we got. They're just regular yellow onions. We'll see if they do well. I never have very much luck with onions in the south. I do great with green onions, but not with bulbing onions. So I thought, well, we'll start early this year and see if we have any success. Um, over here, this is interesting. This is a pretty looking mulberry that actually froze all the way to the ground. I'm not sure of the variety. I'm hoping that it was from a cutting and was not grafted, because who knows what it is. <laughs> It could have been a seedling and it might take like eight years to bloom and make fruit, but we'll see what happens. If it doesn't fruit in the next year or two, I'll graft on top of it. This is the Japanese fiber banana, uh, Musa Bajju, the very, very cold hardy. And it froze and it's already come back that much. I mean, it's crazy. These things are, are great. And now they don't make an edible fruit but I'm growing them for a biomass crop, so they'll be my chop and drop. Plus, I just like the way bananas look. They're really pretty. She thinks I'm gonna feed her some weeds. I like to come out here and pull the weeds and then throw them over the fence, and she'll eat them. This is a little chestnut, Chinese chestnut. Looking very happy, very pretty. Everything woke up early this year, and I thought it was gonna freeze again, and then it didn't. So we get a, a good run on start on spring, I guess. More mulberries. This is a white, I believe. We'll know soon because it's got little fruit on it. We'll find out. Don't know what it is. But we'll be able to see by the fruit, probably. Heck, it might be a red. I don't even know. I'm not very good at telling my mulberries apart. This is a Rachel mulberry, named after my wife, the Rachel Goodman mulberry from South Florida from long, long ago. It's got a great story. I got this one from Sam Singleton, Scrubland Farms, and it looks very, very happy. It's a very pretty tree, too. It's, it's more graceful. It has a very nice leaf shape. I like the dark wood with the green leaves, and it tends to hide its fruit underneath the leaves, which means the birds don't get it as fast as they do on some varieties. It's a little harder to see how much it's actually in fruit unless you go down like this and you can kind of look and see where they're hiding. Then we are at the end of the grocery rows and you can see through here the apple, southern apple orchard varieties that we planted are all growing now. They've all woken up. They look happy. They all got a bit of cow manure and some mulch and they've been watered regularly so they're waking up. Some of them have put on six inches of growth already. Come, we'll walk down through here. Let's see. I think we'll go back 
to the beginning of this row. Oh, that's dramatic. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Got green beans in here. Made three little slots in the earth. Put in green beans. And then these were leftover potato that we had from last spring. I had a box of them, so I stuck them out here and put them in with a few melons here or maybe cucumbers, who knows. And this is a raspberry, heritage raspberry, which did pretty decently for us. These are uh, a nice little southern raspberry, heritage. They've got a good flavor. They don't bear a huge amount for us, but they do bear some, which is better than most raspberries here. Here and there you'll see little pockets that we've dug and planted seeds in. Sometimes things are coming up that are supposed to and sometimes they aren't supposed to. These look like weeds. Get a really good close up of the weeds. It's so authentic. Hashtag authentic. My cassava cuttings survived. I thought they were gone, but we only lost some of them. The ones further down in the deep parts of the box that I had stuck on my porch survived. So the cuttings, I thought they were done. I thought they were gone. God, I think it's a daylily coming up there. There's an Eleagnus. Just little sprouts and stuff. It's really kind of fun to see. Rachel planted this one. This is a Honeycrisp apple, which is not supposed to grow here. So we'll see if it grows here. If it doesn't grow here, it's her fault. That's why I had her plant it. Rosa rugosa. Right there, that makes edible rose hips, or it may one day. And then as we go further back, this is a seedling plum or a plum cot. I'm not sure. I planted seeds and I didn't pay any attention to what they were. I just know that they're edible, so we'll find out if and when it fruits. It's kind of fun to do that. I mean, it's way better than actually paying attention to labels. This is goji berry. Got a couple of kohlrabis. We've got some beets and little pockets here that are just coming up. This is a little Simpson stopper that I got from Sam at Scrubland Farms. That makes an edible fruit. It's a Florida native. I like the way the fruit tastes. Some people don't really like it. it tastes kind of like bitter grapefruit. I, I think they're good. I find them refreshing. Got some beautiful little strawberries that we saved from the old gardens coming up there. Look at this pomegranate. Look at how much growth this thing is putting on. It's just flying. It doesn't even know it got transplanted. You know, when you put them, put them in the ground when they're asleep, they hardly know. This is the apple tree we were bending sideways at the old, the old place and I moved it. It's pretty cool. It kept its shape. I may have to bend it out a little further to make it exactly even to this bed. That's kind of neat. Get another little mulberry here. This is not a particularly good variety. This is the dwarf ever bearing. They start really easy from cuttings and a lot of nurseries carry them, but they're not a great one. They're just not that good. Got some galangal ginger coming up. Big. Some sort of lily. I think that might be a St. Christopher lily. I actually put flowers all through these beds. They're everywhere. Just stuck all kinds of uh, bulbs and roots here and there when they put them on sale for the spring. And that way the flowers will just be coming up all through the year. It'll be interesting to see what grows. We've got dahlias and irises and lilies and daylilies and all kinds of stuff. More cassava coming up. These are so cool. I love to see them come up. So long as it doesn't get any colder, we're good. Dad. It's a little chilly today. Thank you. Bamboo. Thank you, I appreciate it. I needed that. How did you know I needed that? So right here, I've got some, got a muscadine grape climbing here. That's come, gonna go over this, hopefully. It's just waking up a little bit. I've got to actually tie it up properly and I have not tied off this um, T-post. I'm gonna put in three more cattle panel trellises like this that we can grow beans and other things on. They're just a really good use of space and they could fit across the grocery rows anywhere. 
you just kind of stick them to the middle and it could just walk under it if you're six foot tall it's okay gingers are coming up I've got Jerusalem artichokes and all kinds of stuff in here that I, I, I haven't seen yet this is an echinacea I think and uh, yeah we really have no idea I have no idea what's going to be coming up because when we were transplanting everything was going to sleep and we just dug and put roots all over the place just about everywhere and we filled in lots of the space there's bits of sugar cane and yacon roots and gingers and stuff just scattered all through here so I'm going through here and I'm doing things like this putting in uh, seeds like these some of Ezekiel's land race watermelons you can see you can see do you want to plant them yeah. you can see the the mixed genetics of these seeds because they're they're all different shapes and sizes and here just go ahead and stick them in there and you know I'm I'm putting them in there we go put them in all over the place and then sometimes they sprout you know the seeds will sprout and then they'll get a ginger like right through the middle of it but you know we don't have time to mess around we just got to plant stuff and if it fights it fights and if it doesn't then it's companion planting it's companion planting see that it's permaculture it's layered it's it's cool so that's what's going on right now i figured i'd, I'd just do like a a one cut through and show you what's going on in the gardens and give you an idea of what it looks like at this time of the spring. We're gonna be seeing a lot more happen in the next month. It's like every day something new has popped up and it's just gonna get better and better from here. And the soil is so much better than the old place. I think by the time we get to about June and everything's about this big, you're just gonna be blown away by how incredible all of this looks. And I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, when we get there, I'll do a like a nine month tour. It'll be awesome. Thanks for joining me. You can check out the Grocery Real Gardening System. There's a little booklet I wrote on it. I'll put a link below if you want to see how we did it. Or if you're really cheap and you don't want to buy my book, you can just watch my old videos. Catch you next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green.